know that we are able to detect at least one trillion different kinds of smells? That's 100 times the world population. Did you know that we are able to smell fear and happiness? In our daily life, a lot of our daily behavior and decisions we take are beyond our awareness, beyond our conscious thinking mind. Professor Gerald Zalman from Harvard Business School says that up to 95% of our purchase decision making takes place in the subconscious mind. Marketing and advertising experts understand this very well. Lots of money and resources are spent in advertisements because they know how much our unconscious mind matters when purchasing. I believe that this power should be used not to make us buy more, but to rather help us be better people, to help us be more mindful of our actions, to be more compassionate, calm, altruistic, not to feel our cards, but to feel our hearts. We all have stereotypes towards a person, race, age, gender, appearance, that we hold at an unconscious level. It shapes often unknowingly our attitudes and behavior and can end up uh, producing racially or gender unequal outcomes. Since we hold these thoughts at an unconscious level, it's hard to get access to them. But I believe technology can help us to be more aware of these biases. I'm interested in using the power of the unconscious mind for designing technology that can help us to be more mindful and improve our well-being. Over the last five years, I've worked with different technologies. I've developed different prototypes for helping people be connected, be more um, connected at a distance and to better communicate. Immersive and virtual augmented reality systems like Show Me that let you be immersed in another person's point of view. Tag me, a wearable system that lets you send a message automatically by just holding an object. Or social textiles that embodies who you are and dynamically changes depending on your uh, preference, depending on people nearby. So all these projects are good at connecting people, but then I realized there was something missing. We were still missing a more deeper connection. We, we still need technologies that help us to connect at a more deeper level. And I realized that maybe it's not about only connecting with others, but it's also about connecting with yourself, with ourselves, to better understand our emotions. One way of doing so is through meditation, of course. Scientists have already proven that mindfulness meditation can reduce race biases and also has a lot of benefits in your health. However, sometimes it's hard and challenging for novice users or even children uh, to start meditating. So that's one of the inspirations to create Psychic VR. The fantasy that any of us could have superhero powers has always inspired people around the world. By using brain-computer interfaces and virtual reality, we're moving one step closer to making this dream real. We non-invasively monitor and record your electrical activity from the brain and incorporate this data in the virtual reality world using an ocular reef and an EEG headband. So you have different superpowers and for example here you're able to levitate when you're levitated virtually, of course, not in the real world, um, by uh, just focusing. And when your levels of concentration are high, you can better control your superpowers. So for example, here you can move an object just by using your mind. So everything is in real time and a kind of a biofeedback system. We have different superpowers. So for example, uh, you can also train uh, to speed fire with your hands by just really focusing and then you could see how the fire is it's bigger so by using EEG we measure the concentration levels of the user and when the user is focused they are able to make changes in the 3d environment and we believe that this technology uh, helps be people be more focused while being entertained so psychic vr is just an example on how we could use technology to be more aware of our mental state. I believe that in the future we should create technology that make us realize about all the different states of mind, that make us more aware. For example, sleep. I started looking into how we could interfere with people's sleep and dreams. 
And I realized that uh, I looked into light, sound, different senses, but then I realized that the sense of smell, unlike the other senses, is not enough to wake us up, unless it's too strong that it becomes a stinging, and therefore it's like a touch sensation. So this makes a smell a especially interesting modality to use in human-computer interaction. The sense of smell is perhaps the most pervasive of all the senses, but is also one of the least understood and least explored in human-computer interaction. That's why we created Essence. Essence is an olfactory computational necklace that can release a scent depending on your biometric information. We're also looking into the conscious influence of mood and cognitive performance. So Essence is the first olfactory computational necklace that can be remotely controlled through your smartphone and can release a scent based on biometric or contextual data like GPS position. We can also change the intensity and the frequency of the scent, and the user is also able to put the, the, the kind of scent that they want. We monitor brain activity, and then we also monitor your heart rate and electrical acti electrodermal activity, like sweating more or less. Some of the potential applications that we are looking for is for mindfulness and well-being. So we can monitor brain frequencies to detect when the user is in a state of peak performance, high focus or concentration. For example, if you're meditating or also if you're going to fall asleep, we can detect how your levels of uh, your different frequencies are changing in the brain. Therefore, we can release the scent accordingly. This can help people this can help people to be more, um, just have a better sleep, for example, or you can release it while you're learning something during wakefulness, and then you go to sleep and rehearse that content while sleeping. Or, of course, also using virtual and augmented reality um, that, to enhance the sense of immersion. So, I believe in the future, we will be able to, to use these kinds of technologies to make us more aware of our biases, to train ourselves to be more aware of our unconscious behavior that we might not be aware of. We already seen how a smell, it's, you can even smell fear, you can smell happiness. There is also a relationship between empathy and smell. So can we understand better ourselves through olfactory interfaces? I think this is just the beginning, and there is a lot of exciting uh, things to research in that. And for me, what is really important is that current technologies make our minds full. But I believe in the future, they will make us mindful. Thank you.